This is my outline for Acts chapter 2. The text. You see the event of the coming of the Holy Spirit there. You have the uh, response. The people were confused. They asked the question, what does this mean? Uh, in verses 5 through 13. And then in verses 14 through 36, essentially you have uh, Peter's response or explanation there, as I, as I put it up there at the top, Peter's explanation uh, um, in way of a sermon, um, referring to Joel uh, and then to uh, King David, or Jesus, actually, um, and uh, with uh, reference to David here, and then uh, um, God raising him, uh, Jesus, to life. Um, there's always the question there, how did Jesus, if Jesus was dead or in the grave, who raised Jesus? Well, it says it right there. God raised Jesus uh, to life. And then a final section here, uh, verses 37 through 43, is the people were cut to the heart and they asked, brothers, what shall we do? So you have essentially all that. You have three sections. The event, uh, the response with the question, what's going on here? Peter preaches a sermon and the people here uh, respond, what shall we do after being convicted by the Holy Spirit? You can see uh, connections with the coloring of I will pour out my spirit uh, here and here, um, making the connection between uh, Joel essentially uh, prophesying the coming of the Holy Spirit and then uh, with Jesus' uh, death, resurrection, and uh, glorification, the Holy Spirit comes and there's a pouring out. Whoop. Let me just end right here that the exegetical idea, uh, working it out here, the Holy Spirit uh, came upon believers at Pentecost so that uh, whosoever would call upon the, the name of the Lord would be saved. Uh, and then the homiletical idea, the church is empowered by the Holy Spirit preach the gospel so that um, unbelievers can be saved. Essentially, that's the, fulfilling the Great Commission, the, uh, the church's mission, uh, to preach the word to unbelievers.